Welcome again to Hollyfield Physics TV. Uh, today we're going to look at Olber's paradox, and this is part of the Cosmology A2 unit. First up, a little bit of history. Um, Copernicus was the guy that started the idea of the heliocentric universe and placed our sun at the centre. His model wasn't particularly great, though. He had all of the planets going around in circular orbits. Kepler, a little while later, using the superb data of Tuyabois, or Tycho Bray to most people, improved on the model, um, bringing in elliptical orbits. If you remember Kepler's third law, which is uh, t squared proportional to r cubed. Another really great improvement was the telescope. Uh, and Galileo was the first person to point his telescope to the heavens. And this certainly helped confirm the sun at the centre of our universe. What really clinched it, though, was the work of Isaac Newton and his gravitation. His gravitation put Kepler's observations onto a firm scientific footing. One thing with Newton's universe, however, because of his gravitation, he realised very quickly that it needed to be infinite, otherwise it would have collapsed. Unfortunately, this caused a much larger problem. A larger problem that was conveniently ignored for a very long time. <laughs> but it brought out what we now know as Olber's paradox. And it goes a bit like this. If we've got an infinite universe, every position in the sky that we look at, our line of sight will end on a star. And that basically means that day or night, the sky is going to be bright. If you look outside right now, you'll know that it's not. And this is Olber's paradox. Infinite universe means a bright sky day and night. Because it's not bright day and night, there's the paradox. Now we need to look at this in a slightly more mathematical way. So if we look at the Earth, there it is out there in space. And we consider a thin spherical shell of stars. And what we're going to do is calculate how many stars are in our thin spherical shell. The thickness of the shell is T. And it's got a radius of R. In other words, its distance from the Earth is R. What we need to do is find the volume of that spherical shell. And that's its surface area times its thickness. Surface area of a sphere is 4 pi R squared. Now we'll have n stars per unit volume of space. So the total number of stars in the shell, 4 pi r squared tn. The brightness of the shell, inverse square law, so it's proportional to 1 over r squared. And that gives us 4k pi r squared tn over r squared. The r squareds cancel out. So the brightness of that shell at distance r from Earth is 4 times some constant k pi t, which is the thickness of the shell, n, the number of stars per unit volume of space. Let's look at a larger shell. We we'll use the same reasoning. We've got a distance of 2r this time, though. We've still got exactly the same thickness, t. As I say, the shell is now 2r. So this gives us a volume of 4 pi 2r all squared times the thickness t. We've still got n stars per unit volume. So the total number of stars in the shell is 16 pi r squared tn. But the brightness this time is proportional to 1 over 4r squared because it's 2r whole squared. And we can cancel out the 4r squared and that leaves us a brightness of 4k pi tn, which is precisely the same as the brightness of the shell that's only r away. So this all means that the brightness isn't determined by the distance from the Earth. Every shell's got exactly the same brightness. Infinite universe, we've got an infinite number of shells. Therefore, the sky is infinitely bright. But we know it isn't. 
That's the mathematical proof of Olga's paradox. This has been Hollyfield Physics TV. I am Richard Gould. Thanks very much for listening and watching. Do well in your exams.